Hello and welcome to another video. So today we are checking out Runecraft. Runecraft is not my favorite deck right now, just because it doesn't seem to have much of a power behind it. Uh, the Riley Hydro Shaman is great, but I just fucking really good mid to early, mid to late game that isn't just straight up Riley plays. Uh, the Riley does again, as I said, good, but it doesn't have any kind of really solid hitters for the mid game. The Tetris okay. That's really it. Uh, other than that, Apex Elemental doesn't do a lot usually, other than the occasional clear. And that's really it. So, we'll get right into it and check it out. So this deck in particular was one that definitely took me a little bit to get used to, mainly because I was used to destroying the Natron, ele uh, the Natron Amulets from the previous couple of deck videos you've seen at this point. But I was starting to get used to it uh, by this point in the game. Also, the other problem I kept running into is just a lack of any kind of counterplay. I couldn't come up with a way to deal with a lot of cards, especially bigger cards that would come down. You could do an okay job dealing with them, but usually that was about it. I couldn't do any big, big swings. Luckily, this deck does have a lot of good ways to get Natter and Great Tree back to your hand or onto the board to begin with, so that's one great advantage. But basically, you're forced to... Generate as many great trees as you can, as fast as you can. And that's really all you can do. So Iridescent Sphinx, that's one I haven't seen yet, played from Havencraft, so it's nice that we get to see that come down. And now, the idea of this is to return the great tree to my hands, or get as many great trees in my hands so I can play them out. So we've now got a 2 on our play counter for Nana and Great Trees, even though we've had 3 on board. Our opponent's not doing anything too crazy. Getting the small little Meowskatia. We can actually deal with this very easily. Also, the uh, Mysterian Wisdom is in this deck, mainly to return Riley to, the, uh, to our deck, since if that's in hand, it's not really usable at all till turn 9 anyway. You mainly want it off the Invocation, so in case you get more than one Riley in your hand potentially, Mysterian Wisdom can come in very handy. Alright, there is the Iridescent Sphinx summoning. Not that I could counter that with the hand we had to begin with, so... We just have to deal with it. What? What's next? So ideally I'll draw a card that will help me deal with all this. Riley isn't it. So we'll throw that back into the deck. Pathfinder, unfortunately, doesn't have a lot of value right now. For our opponent at least, so that's a really nice thing. I did decide to do this, get rid of the Tutankhamun as quick as possible. Unfortunately, Iridescent Sphinx played again. It was a rough one. I actually want to try this deck out. It looks like it could be fun. Iridescent Sphinx is an interesting card and I like the idea of playing it. So with just 5 health left, we don't have much we can do. Luckily that top deck Pyromancer is going to come in handy, wiping the majority of the board. And opening up a good chance to start our Pathfinder play. Now we have plenty of great trees in hand. Now our Natron count is reasonably high. Or Naterran. Naterran? I think it's Naterran. I don't know. Naterran might be the way it's pronounced. Naterran sounds more natural to me, but I'm sure it is Naterran. Because it's Naterra, so Naterran would make sense. So we go for the tree plays, of course. Luckily, the Apex Elemental is a great draw there. Since then, replaying that great tree will give us even more advantage. Now, it was a debate on whether I go for the Traveler or I go for the Mystic Circle. 
Oh, they decided to go for the Mysterian Circle just because the ward was going to have a lot more value in case they play something like a a potential uh, risky card there. I'm glad I went for it because I would have been dead. Unfortunately, if I had have played this more correctly, I would have won. Uh, I missed the fact that Riley can actually be played from hand effectively. Put us at risk again, so completely my fault. And drawn out this game a little longer than it should have been, honestly. So if I had have realised, yeah, I would have played the Riley and won the game right off it. So, gotta say, I was a little disappointed in myself. And no doubt I'll miss it next turn too, since obviously I'm not that bright when it came to playing Riley out. Yep. <laughs> I actually ended up sending the Riley back to the deck. Huge mistake. Huge, huge, huge mistake. Try not to make that mistake when playing it. Again, the fact that these are new cards, I completely missed over the fact that Riley's effect isn't just invocation. Riley's effect for invocation is just a summoning condition. Uh, it's not actually the requirement to generate it. Fortunately, it didn't matter too much as we ended up winning here, but I should have won two turns ago. Once I came to uh, realize that mistake, I decided not to make it in the shadow match, which definitely helped me out. It's a very simple thing to not realize that the uh, effect for her gaining stats can actually just be played normally on 9. Definitely something to keep an eye on. Doesn't make her completely useless, it just makes her slower. Because you can get her out obviously a lot earlier than 9 if you're using the invocation, but when you're playing it on 9 it works pretty well. It also opens up really easy abilities to go for one turn kills. You have Invocation summon one on turn 9 and then you play one on turn 9 giving you two of them on board for well over 10 damage in most cases. So it looks like we're playing one for one here. Which is actually fine. Since I can actually go for my own setup here pretty nicely. And a Pyromancer, that should come in very handy. A great return card. So I go face Pyromancer. Why not at this point? And just play the great tree for extra value. So Bone Drone is something that I can't really deal with in any way other than just playing Angelic Smite. Angelic Smite is just the best way to do it. it. means they don't get the extra value out of it. I just go face for a little bit of damage. Pyromancer in hand again. Going to help us out greatly. Especially against a Cerberus. That's going to be a really good play. Even if it won't quite take the Cerberus out without Evo, it'll still do the job nicely and taking out all the extra. And we can also use Death Pathfinder to actually take out the Cerberus, so... I'm looking at an overall good value turn. So this should work out really nicely here. You can even play a Great Tree. Which will just generate some extra value again, that's what we want. We want to generate as many Great Trees as we can for those value turns. Alright, Desert Pathfinder, not really an issue. And I want to hold off on the Apex play yet, so decided not to go for it here. I just wanted to get as many trees played as I could. And since we got a second Apex, I did decide to play that one since there's no need to really hold two of them, since we don't plan on making this game run that long. Knight of the Living Dog. Well, <laughs> sort of a cool card, actually. I like that one. Alright, those immortal elephants are actually a problem. I don't like dealing with them. They're quite annoying. That's actually where Angelic Smite would have been perfect play, but... I mean, at least we got rid of them, so that's a bonus. And a lullaby necrofam or Lubel necrofamily, I'm not sure, I think it's Lubel. Lubella? I don't know. Lullaby? Don't know. Either way, not a big worry. At least they're forced to get rid of this ward. That's a bonus. 
And I believe we are set up for our Riley play. We should have an exact amount for it. Giving us perfect 8. Plus an out of the Riley from hand with an Evo. Gives us 18 damage for lethal. And our win. Redeeming ourselves for the previous stuff up of not winning on the turn we should have. So overall, this deck isn't too bad. Uh, it is definitely the weakest of the three I've played so far, but maybe that's just me having a little bit higher learning curve on it, getting used to the returning the amulets instead and trying to work out the best way to get Riley out. That or there is just better ways to play the deck with different cards. We'll have to wait and see. Again, the meta is very new. I'm making this video day one, so don't expect it to be crazy good and expect it to shift fairly rapidly, so keep an eye out for that. Expect my week two videos to kind of be a little better once they start coming out. You should have a better idea on what's going on with the entire meta, and we should be settling into more competitive style decks before we move on to more just fun random things that I can come up with. So, hopefully you guys did enjoy it. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe, you'll find the deck list in the description below. Until next time, guys, see ya.